Wow, guys, I'm so happy to bring you today's video on Gold Coast Picker, but first I wanna get into our channel sponsor, 1.8 Real Estate. As the name suggests, 1.8 Real Estate. That's all you're gonna pay, 1.8%. 1.8%, that's right. Your house could be $100 million, it could be $100,000. 1.8.com.au, 1.8realestate.com.au. Check out their website, Michael Gleason. Amazing, amazing guy, wealth of knowledge, selling through all the properties quickly. His database is huge. Now into today's video. We're back at the Gold Coast Picker and we're selling all of this stuff via auction. I have been buying so many coins lately that we've got to go through it because I'm going to take it all to auction. We're going to let them sort it and sell it for us. Buying has never been better locally. It's the best place to source stock. The problem is the volume of stock that's available, I keep buying bulk lots without knowing what I'm buying. People are like, oh look, just give me a gram for the tub. What's in there, I don't know, but take it. And I'm just like, yep, roll the dice. We'll see what we get. Where do we start, mate? That box is fine. All right, so all of this is gonna to go to Lloyd's Auction House. Something like that, I think they're about $100 for the set. And these are just commemorative coins. There's a whole box set. Now you could put these on eBay, but as you'll find in this video, by the time you go through and list all of these individually, one by one on eBay, and you pay shipping fees and you've got to post and line up at the post office, all that time takes away from you going out and finding the next deal. Thing is, how do I go about putting all this in auction? This here, that's about $1,000 on eBay. That's the Holden commemorative 50 cent coin set. It's a really collectible, desirable set. How cool are these pennies in there? Mm. Not very good condition though. I think you put a reel up the other day, didn't you? About this? No, With that this? was a gold rock that I've got. Oh, yeah. totally different. I don't okay. even know where that is at the moment. Um, look at this actually. Oh. I've got so many videos that I haven't made you guys yet. That's a $350 uh, commemorative $2 2012 poppy. And this is rated MS65, so it's not the best rating but it is up there uh, as far as grading is concerned that's why the value is higher these have dropped a lot this would have been 500 dollars 12 months ago now it's about 350 so that'll go in auction and then we've been buying a lot of these these are the 10 dollar polymer notes and the rest of these are just 100 dollar paper notes that we had in australia uh, before we went to the new designs because of forgery but these get about $140 per $100 note in auction. They're cool. We've got four or $5,000 worth of paper notes, I think, just in face value. For me to sell, I mean, just at 20 there, at two grand, for me to sell that, I need 20 people wanting to pay, you know, 120, $130, $140 per note. It's too hard to deal with that many individual transactions, which is why I prefer to put things in auction. We've got a bunch of these scattered through as well. And these used to have pen holders and you'd put your pen in there. They should be 20 to $30 each if they had the pen holders. The other thing you can do with coins is you get the coin sheets. And if you put them, like if you put $2 coins in here, you got four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, you got $48 worth of face value, $2 commemorative coins. You're gonna get anywhere from 100 to $200 per sheet which is more than double face value. So whenever you're finding $2 coins in circulation, like this for example, they're always above face value. What you get depends on how you sell it, but I prefer selling you know, 45 items at a time than I do one item at a time. There's so much in here, I don't even know what's in here. This is from garage sales and op shops that have set stuff aside for me and I don't know what's been set aside because when I go to the op shops and they've got tubs for me, they just tell me a price and I buy everything without seeing what's in there myself. But it's worth doing because it saves you the time that it takes to go and source things individually. So I'm gonna trust that the auctions do the right thing by me and them and it's in their interest too because then they're gonna get a higher sell uh, a higher sales value which means I'm going to pay more commission and then um, that will work out well. Look that's uh, one of those but they've been sold individually. It's just a matter of going through like have a look at just what's in this one tub alone. You know how do you make the most of oh look at that that's a He-Man coin that's of cool. what's here. Thing is though not knowing what's actually in here 
can harm me in the sense that I don't know if I've got a collector out there that's looking for any of these items because I haven't spent the time researching any of them myself. And I did actually put a, I think the earliest coin that I had was 1680 and I left that in an auction house because I didn't realize it was in the tub that I dropped off because of the volume that we keep accumulating. Oh, look at that, you want that. Can you see what I'm looking at already? Have a yeah. look, Lee. I pulled it up before. Oh, did you? It's in. Oh, there you go. That's worth a million bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. So, tell me, Lee, what mm -hmm. would you do if you had this volume of <laughs> stock? Would you personally prefer to take all of this to yeah. a coin collector, or would you? Oh no, they all fell out. Or would you take them and put them in an auction setting? These are all ACDC coins. They're funky. Um, I don't know enough about it. I would probably take it to a coin collector. But do you know, if you took this to a coin dealer, so they're more inclined to give you less than what you'd get in an auction house. Really? That's because they're cheeky? <laughs> no. Well, because the coin dealer's there to make money. Yeah, they are. Whereas an auction house, you're going to potentially get one of two people, a collector who's going to buy and pay retail, yep. or a coin dealer who's going to buy anyway to make money. Mm. So why would you take the risk and go straight to a coin dealer? You're better off going straight to auction because you're going to get retail plus coin collectors and you're going to get more money. Okay, guys. She's changing her mind. She's going to the auction. <laughs> <laughs> um, look at all these notes. But this is how Good it gets guy. donated, Lee. Yeah. That's how they donate it. Like hey. this, is, this has come from op shops who have had donations like this and I've said, put the coins and notes aside for me. They put tubs aside, you go in and you pick it up. But you don't know what you're going to get. What a score. It is. And there's some still in rolls, guys. Oh, look at these. Look, they're one pound notes. Hmm. Now, the cereals and the signatures are what determine the value on these. You can buy a one pound note for $10,000 and you can buy a one pound note for $2. There is a difference. Condition's obviously not here, but rarity and condition are the two things you're going to look for. American notes aren't that great here, and these, I think, are they Japanese, Japanese government? So what they did back um, in the 1940s were they had um, uh, military notes. Look, that's a Zwanzig shilling. What, what's that? Is that Zwanzig? That's 20, that's German. German. Zwanzig. Yeah, I'd... Zwanzig is 20. <laughs> <laughs> but look at that, we can use that. That's a $2 Singapore note, that's worth about $3 Australian in face value. If you're not gonna get, see the thing is with the world notes, I put them in big bay lots, in box lots, and you're getting less than face value. You're actually better off getting a bunch of these and taking them to a coin exchange and getting the value that way. But these are all full of various notes, like they're $5 per coin. The shillings and threepence and sixpence are silver, so they're worth money in silver. They are about $10 each. I just personally wouldn't be going and selling to a coin dealer. I've offered these to a number of coin dealers up here and they've offered me less than what I've purchased them for. And I've purchased them for bugger all. And I know the profit margin that's in these. I'm expecting to do quite well out of this. If you wanna see how well we're gonna do, be sure to follow check out my Instagram account. That's where I put all the daily tips and content up there. All the links to all the auctions that I'm holding or the people are holding on the Gold Coast Picker behalf are in the Instagram links. What's that? They just need to go to the bank. I don't know why all that's in there or what's in there. It's all just standard currency. I don't know Maybe where that's from. Triple check it. I'll just go tip that in a coin machine and I'll get what I get. There might be a couple hundred bucks in there. Um, more commemorative style coins. Actually, I've got just as many stamps that so we'll do another video. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and we'll do a stamp video moving forward. Um, a lot of this has come from op shops. We've done, what have we done? We've done thrifting videos, we've done flea market finds, we've done garage sale finds, we've storage. done swap meet, storage units, yep. all sorts of content. We're basically hustling in any way we can in order to resell for more than what we're buying things for. These are about $10 per coin. Any coin on card generally, if it's a dollar denomination, goes for about the $10 value. Quite often these are sold in post offices for about $18. So resale value doesn't always go up on every single coin. These 50 cent pieces, oh no, that's not a 50 cent, that's a 50 cent. 
These are sort of two dollars on average for a 50 cent coin. The problem is I don't know what's in here. Imagine if there's a 1930 penny. Lloyd's Auction House, I believe, sold a 1930s penny for sixty thousand dollars. I've got all uncirculated um, coin rolls. Here's more paper notes. What are we doing with all these paper notes? That's I don't know. look. I mean, these. I really should be spending the time and going through and putting these these um. Like these sheets here for coins, they do the same sheets for notes. And when you put a few notes in a sheet, you're getting a lot more because they're presented well. The problem is when you're putting these in auction, I've got to trust that the auction house will advertise them by what they are. For example, the difference between those auction houses that are trustworthy and those that aren't, they'll put them, the ones that are not trustworthy will do this, right? They'll go like that. And they'll take a photo and they'll be assorted paper notes. Trustworthy auctions will put them all out so you actually can see what you're buying. Mm. That's the difference between auction houses when you're dealing with them. Some staff are lazy as well. I've got auction houses that are putting my stuff out in the tubs that I'm dropping off, like this for example, right? There might be $50,000 worth of notes in there. They'll take a photo like that and they'll say assorted world coins and notes. And that's what they're doing because they're buying it back themselves. You need to be careful on who you deal with and what you're putting in. Some places do do that. We've got so many of these. I just don't know the best way, because of the volume that we've got, in getting rid of a lot of this. A lot of people will not buy this at what it's worth. They will want to buy it to resell and make money on themselves. And I don't see the point in dealing with resellers and selling all this to them for half price I'm better off dealing with an auction house and getting what I get. And if resellers want to buy that way, the link will be on my Instagram stories when the auctions are available. And if they don't want to buy that way, well, people that are collectors, they can buy that way to find the stock that they are missing or that's hard to find because there's a lot of hard to find items in here. We did find a bunch of gold sovereigns in here, but I've sent them to Scammels. That auction is coming up next week, actually, uh, Monday. But if you check out Scammels Auctions, Monday they hold weekly auctions and they're going to have a lot of high-end jewellery coins and notes in their next auction. The round 50 cent pieces, because they're 66% silver, they're actually going for $15 now. They're just round 50 cent Australian pieces. A lot of people... That's not it, though. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Is that what you're showing me? No. A lot of people do miss... Um, confuse the New Zealand and Australian 50 cent pieces though. The, the New Zealand ones are only worth 50 cents. The Australians are worth $15. There's one cent coin rolls. We've got a lot of coin rolls scattered in various auctions as well. Ah, uh, look at this. Oh no, this is the problem, Lee. I remember, actually, I bought this from a garage sale. And you know what's funny? Little Johnny came to this garage sale with me, right? He asked this person at their garage sale, do you have any coins or notes or jewelry for sale they said no i was wearing my gold coast picker shirt right and you would think that wearing a wanted to buy shirt or a dealer shirt would go against you but it didn't i said do you have any jewelry or coins or notes and they said you know anything about that i said yes they're like okay we'll bring it out johnny's like <laughs> this came from there i haven't even gone through this johnny you need to wear a gold coast picker t-shirt so these are all 50 cent pieces so i'll talk to the auctions when we go there shortly and i'll probably pull that page out and i'll sell that as one lot here's another lot of 50 cent commemorative coins another lot these are going to sell a lot better than what these are presentation makes a big difference the issue i've got is the volume of stock that i've got and i'm just trying to move through things as quickly as i can because to me Old adage, time is money. I want to go and find the next lot of coins, not sit here and trying to get the most money from what's here. We've got some $2 commemorative coins. We have some transition coins. These are actually quite desirable. They're probably $3 now. They were limited edition run. The problem as well is, if they sold this as one lot, when you're looking at auctions, be sure to check more than the first page because the description and the photo doesn't always match. I've sold albums like this and they've taken one photo. That might be the bad photo. That might be the cheap page of coins. Go through the next photo and you find another page. The next photo, another page. The next photo, another page. And Oh, look, here, speaking of which, there's $15. That's another $15. These are the round 1966 50-cent Australian pieces. 
So those need to come out of this folder because they themselves will be a lot. Now it depends on which auction houses you use as to how many coins they do per lot. In Adelaide, they put these in lots of 10 to 20 per lot and you're averaging $12 a coin in auction. Here on the Gold Coast, not all things are created equal. Coins actually do quite well locally and they put these sometimes in lots of one up to lots of five and they're getting between 15 and 25 dollars per 50 cent piece this is where you need to do your research on auctions because auctions across australia do better in different areas than others so there's auctions that do better in furniture there's auctions that do better with antiques there's auctions that do better with collectibles such as toys there's petrol auctions there's car auctions motorbike auctions different auction houses are known for selling different items better than others. Some are known for pottery, some are known for glassware, some are known for bottles. It's a matter of doing your own research and this is how I learned. For 20 years I've been watching auction houses to get an idea on the value of items when they're selling so I know when I'm out buying what I can pay because I know what I'm going to get in auction settings. Auction settings are also often, often, not always, cheaper than what you can get on eBay. But with the volume we have no alternative other than to put the items through auctions because there's just too much to handle. You imagine, this is only two little tubs, which take up no space. When I've got a thousand tubs, and if I was to sell all of these individually, this is gonna take me a month worth of work, let alone trying to get through the other thousand tubs. So Lee, I think for the sake of this video, I'll give you a quick rundown and indication of what might be going through auction over at Lloyd's Auction House with what's here. We've got more auctions at Scammell's. We've got more auctions at Albion. We've got more at the auction rooms. We've got stuff scattered across Australia, depending on what items we're selling and how long it's taking to sell. Some auctions are backlogged with the quantity of items that they're having come through. So we're trying to get through as much as we possibly can. Look, there's an $80 coin. Why is because it $80? That is the coronation coin. Okay. It's I think the second lowest dom, dom, <laughs> the second lowest denomination two dollar commemorative coin there is, and this is the dove. That's about thirty dollars. That's one of the top five two dollar coins that people are trying to collect. Okay. It doesn't help when I'm just throwing them in there like that either, because oh. people do like to grade them. Yeah. And if you get them graded, this is what graded is. These cost about twenty to thirty dollars depending on the volume you put in. The more coins you get graded the cheaper the rate of grading is if you spend thirty dollars getting this graded it can increase the coins value by hundreds of dollars there's so much dodgy stuff happening though be extremely careful some people are getting everyone to send in their coins to them who are then sending the coins off to get graded so it's like me saying Lee tell your mates to send me all their two dollar coins I'm gonna send them off to get graded. The more we send off to get graded, the cheaper the grading, right? Mm. Right, so if I send five of my own coins off, the grading might cost me $30 a coin. If I send 500 coins off, because you and your friends have sent me your coins to send off grading, we might get them for $15 each. Mm. What's happening though is, me, not me physically, but me being the person I'm referring to, yeah. we get 500 coins, right? I send them off to get graded. I get them back. All the coins that have the highest grading, I'm keeping. Then I'm saying, these are your coins, this is how they came back. And I'm giving you all the lowest grading coins. So some people are doing extremely well. Mm. Beware of who you're dealing with. <sighs> what do you think about that? Did you know that, Lee? No. Does that surprise you? No. Tricks of the trade, <laughs> insider secrets. Yeah. There's a $1 silver commemorative coin. There's about $50 there. I think the uh, there's about 28 to $33 in silver content alone in that one coin. It's quite pretty. Yeah. Look, there's a dollar uh, roll. So there's $20 in $1 coins that How hasn't been opened. That? Uh, normally they've got a year on them. That one isn't a RAM roll though. Uh, it does say on the coin, but it doesn't mean all the coins are the same. That's 1984 on that end. Head, oh. tail, doesn't always, no, other way tail head doesn't always mean that it's the same they're circulated so they're not uncirculated coins so you don't know what you're going to get it's the risk you take uh, i think there's a lot of this that's actually just standard currency so it won't be sold for more than what the face value is i'm gonna to have to pull that out and put that in this bag over here uh, but we're pretty much to the end of this one 
Oh look, there's a bunch more of those $5 uh, commemorative coins. There was just so many of them made. Um, I think they were 5 or $10 when they came out. Even though they're 20, 30 years old, there just wasn't a whole lot of desirability when collecting them. And they made so many as well. Um, but look, that's, that's that tub. So that one goes over here. Look, we've got another one of these here. Another <laughs> coin album. This might, oh, is that empty? Actually, you know what? I bought a bunch of these empty coin albums because I wanted to pull these pages out, put coins in them to put in auction, which is why I've got a few. Oh, look, we've got more notes. So what are these? Are they? Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, the face value on these alone is what they are. So I could go to a bank, deposit this, and I'll still get the $102 uh, value that uh, is the dom that is the denomination on them but some are worth more than others once again depending on the signatures etc i've got a few star notes actually um <laughs> another reason you need to be careful is coin and note collectors aren't going to tell you that if there is a star next to the serial that it's an end of run note therefore the value is minimum 10 times the value minimum 20 times the value a hundred dollar note you will not buy in a star note for under a thousand dollars so it's 10 times the value so you need to you need to know what it is that you're referring to and a lot of people out there will not tell you that these that? these are actually eight carat gold coins each one of these is 20 to 30 dollars in gold oh. by themselves huh? there's 57 in here they should go in lots of five. So these are the things that we need to talk about when I'm taking this over to the auction house. They're really funky. Yeah, they're actually, they're real gold, solid gold. Uh, like smaller versions of sovereigns. I think I've got five or six sovereigns in Scammels on Monday. So be sure to check that out if you're looking for any gold sovereigns. Guys, the app here, he's yeah. gonna put the link. Yeah, <laughs> all of these for example, look that. On the back, there's a phantom coin. That's cool. They should have what they were selling for at the post office. For instance, that's $20 at the post office. So that on eBay might be $20. A lot of people buy these hoping that they're going to go up and they can make some money on them. It doesn't always happen though because of how many are produced. Mm -hmm. Quite often it does say, yeah, look, limited edition of 13,000. What you want is obviously the lowest denomination, but you need 13,000 Hawthorne supporters effectively because <laughs> Coin collectors won't necessarily buy it because they're not Hawthorne fans. Um, look, there's a Sydney one. But, you know, people that collect Phantom will want one. Definitely. How many of the Phantoms were made? Oh, yeah, here, maximum mintage, 5,000. So there's only 5,000 of those that have been made. Now that, I think, they're about 130 to $150 on eBay. I'm going to put it in auction and I'm going to get what I get. There's only like 30 to $50. Well, it's about $30 in silver value, but the collector value makes it worth more. And the fact that there's a limited run of them. So... The risk you take, we put it in auction and we don't know what we're going to get from one week to the next, but because of this volume that we keep finding, that's how we're going to do it. What's that? Okay, what's, oh, oh okay. these are reproduction. Oh. They're not real gold. Limited edition of two and a half thousand though. But who is it? What is uh, Ned it? Kelly. Oh, yep. Yeah, so that's a little commemorative set. What have we got here? So these prices are what they would have sold for back whenever they sold. And the problem I had when I had the shop was things like this, my kids were selling for the price that was on them. That was never my price. That was either the price when it sold originally or potentially when I bought it at a garage sale. These could be worth 10 or $15. But my kids were selling everything for the price. So I was losing money on so many instances because of situations like that. Australian coin set. I don't think these have gone up in value. I think a lot of the coins are actually decreasing. Um, it's just the economy we're in at the moment. But look how many of the shillings that we've got. Some years are worth a lot more than others. But, you know, each one of these should be selling as a page. I think I'll put a few hundred of these down in uh, Scammell's Auctions, actually. I'll put a screenshot here of how they've been selling my coins for me down there. It's really good both as a collector or as a reseller to sell and buy from auction because you do get a variety of prices you know it comes out in the wash sometimes you get more for things that aren't worth as much as what you think that they are other times you get less but at the end of the day you're getting the money and it's moving stock that's some magic yep that's cool i actually sent a box of the vegemite coins down to adelaide as well there's vegemite coin there is <laughs> yeah so that's we've got cool. a number of those in there Funny. i just wondered if i had any more of those uh, sovereigns in here what's that that's uncirculated that's a nice little commemorative coin. That's actually $10. That there, that's a $10 silver coin. I didn't know I had that. So that's 92% <laughs> silver at 20 grams. 
lots you don't know you have. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this. That's that's gold. James Bond. Did you know you Half had that Half a gram one? gold coin. I, I didn't know if it was down in Adelaide or if it was here oh, because of the volume <laughs> that I've sent. Uh, that should be a couple of hundred dollars too by itself. That's good. What, uh, what Lloyds are doing for me is when you have in excess of $10,000 worth of stock, they will do a standalone auction. So I think we've done seven or eight there so far. We've got plenty more coming. Oh gosh, this looks heavy. It is. I don't know what's in there either. Oh, yep. Um, no, I'll just leave that there for a minute. And what's in that? That looks... Oh, oh. more. That looks like normal... That's like a sorting pile. Normal stuff as well. And... I don't know what that is. Uh, okay, well... Open that up. Let's do it. What's in here? You know what? I'm missing a bunch that I knew I had, and I can't find them. We need oh, to Oh, look, we got Mum. more notes. Mum might know. <laughs> um, I don't know what nationality these are. A variety again. Um, I do have a bunch of carded poppy coins somewhere, but they're not in here. Now, she thought they were in here, but the problem is she doesn't know exactly what we've got because of the quantity we keep getting as well. But look, once again, we've got all world coins and Australian coins, and someone's gone to the time to actually write all of these out for what's in here. That's really good. You know what we'll do? I'm going to have a quick hunt, see if I can find these carded coins, because I know there's a few thousand dollars worth of those somewhere in here. And then... We'll take these to auction and we'll show you that process. A little longer than a few minutes later. What did you think of that process, Lee? Oh, let's go on. <laughs> Why? Only because it's so much to go through. Yeah. Uh, would you have left all of that with the auction house and let them sort through it? Yeah, because that's what they're skilled to do, right? Yeah. I personally think that it's the best way in order to move bulk because it's time that I don't need to now spend going through what I've just dropped off. I had a guy spend four days just sorting my coins, another three days just sorting my jewellery at another auction house. You know what that means, Lee? That's seven oh, days I don't need to spend. <laughs> <laughs> yep. In the seven days that they're working on my behalf and they're just taking the final value fee commission, it's seven days I now have to go out and source more stock because we need more stock. <laughs> and you need more content. Shadow, here. Uh, so, we need to open up what's in here. This is the problem. This is exactly why we're doing what we're doing. All of the trading cards need to be gone through. All of those are trading cards as well. I put all of those VHS videos on an Instagram story, Lee. Did you see that? Yes, I did. How much did they go for? I don't remember. $20. $20. There's a thousand VHS videos and I got $20 on my Instagram story. Who's picking them up? Uh, someone. We're waiting for them. I know. And then we still need to go through all of this. Um, the problem is the volume. So they're all just Simpsons toys. And I've got bread crates of Smurfs. Yeah, that's just one tub. I've got a lot of this in my garage too. And another storage container. This is only a small section. That's just Lego figures. <laughs> um, and then all of these were TV sorted but look that's just wrestling figures all the way through and I've been selling them by the tubs and Disney toys actually I think there's Mickey Mouse in there for you Lee probably, probably. <laughs> there's a few Disney there oh, yeah, uh, can't she can't reach <laughs> um, Astro Boys and Oh, I forgot I had another tub of Furbies. I took about 70 or 80 Furbies down to Adelaide auction. And then all of these are sorted by category. So old He-Man toys, small toys. I don't even know what small toys mean. Small toys again. Lots of small toys. Oh, we got heaps of Ninja Turtles. What else is there? E.T. <laughs> Well, that's how we've been selling it. I'll put a link here on how we've been selling all of our action figures and toys in auction. I've started going through tubs and making up box lots like Batman. And that's the only way to do it. That's one side of the shed, guys. What I've been doing is taking everything to auction. Actually, I put $50,000 worth of musical instruments in auction. And then I sent the last six guitars down to Adelaide in that shipping container I sent down. And since I've been back in two weeks, I've bought all of those guitars again. 
there's just so much stock up here it's hard to say no these are what i'm going to take in my next auction drop for a specialty gold coast picker collectible trading card and action figure lot and they're all by box lots for example we got a harry potter lot what's that is that x-men lot and that's all i've done all the way through we've got box lots of whatever's in each box that's just a large figure lot what's in that one can't even see is that afl in that one what's underneath I think that's NFL and we've got NRL. So we've got all the sporting codes scattered through. There's cricket and that's just how we're moving our volume. That was full of clothes and we got rid of the two rows in one hit in auction. But then I've picked up those since I've been back. Um, just when you're buying bulk lots for bugger all, I needed more life jackets. So I got some. These are all the bread crates we've managed to empty so far. But then, you know, I said I wasn't buying shoes anymore and I got tubs more of shoes. So what do you do? They're just so cheap up here. What have you found now, Lee? I don't even know what this is. That's a computer speaker. speaker. Oh, yeah. Okay, yep. Got to crack the whip when you're around. Okay. We've got YouTube videos coming out every single week. Hit that bell notification to start up to date with all the future content. Share it with your mates. Like, comment below. What would you do if the buying was so cheap that you just found it really difficult to say no to. Quite often I'm losing money. I'm buying things for $5. I'm putting lots of 20 per lot in auction. Average cost to me $100 and then they're selling for $100. $1,000 worth of eBay value and all I'm getting is my $100 back. What would you do? I really want to thank all of our paid subscribers and sponsors. It really helps the channel out in me bringing content for you guys moving forward. I sincerely want to thank today's sponsor, 1.8realestate.com.au. 1.8 is all you'll pay on any real estate transaction if you get them to sell your property for you. Contact Michael Gleason, link in description below. Thanks for watching today's video at Gold Coast Picker. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that thumbs up and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so you won't miss all the thrifting, thrilling finds that we're going to find. Thrilling, thrifting finds that we're going to find. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your mates, hit that bell notification and subscribe. That'll all entail that, that'll ensure that you won't miss the next videos that we're gonna find on all those thrilling adventures that we're going on. If you enjoy what we're doing here at Gold Coast Picker, consider becoming a paid subscriber or a video sponsor. Thanks for watching today's video. If you enjoyed what you saw, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. Hit that bell notification for more thrilling finds moving forward and we'll see you in the next video.